Hello there, my fellow soulless metal people, and welcome back to another Warhammer 40k lore video. Today we shall keep pushing in our little Necron Revival series, with another interesting and powerful character. This time we shall have a Nemesaur and Overlord with a rather unique and quite funny character trait. His name is Zandrak, a mighty leader of the Sautic dynasty. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Zandrek is a Necron Overlord and Nemesaur of the Sautek Dynasty, who was once counted among the greatest generals of the last Necron Tyr Empire. It was via his campaigns of conquest that the two world of Gidrim rose from a small and insignificant planet on the fringes of the galaxy to become the ruler of a dozen star systems. Even now, though Gidrim had been subsumed as a crown world of the Sautek dynasty, Zandrek is among their mightiest heroes. It is a well-deserved reputation too, for Gidrim is one of the most expansionist of the recently awoken crown worlds of Sautek, and the undying armies of Zandrek are an ever-present peril on the Milky Way galaxy's eastern fringe. While possessing a grand and calculating military genius, many among the Necron nobility believe that Zandrek doesn't grasp reality as it truly is. Many believe his mind suffered damage during the Necron's great sleep, and as a consequence he is trapped in the past, in the wars of secession which racked his quarter of the ancient Necron Tyr Empire. In his mind, he believes his campaign are still being fought as a creature of flesh and blood, crushing rebellious leaders and bringing their domains back into the fold. He does not see armies of orcs, Eldar or humans, but armies of rebellious kinsmen battling to sunder his beloved dynasty. As such, Zandrek is one of the few Necron overlords to employ the full protocol of honorable Necron combat against all enemies. He disdains the use of death marks, assassin canoptic wraiths, and other strategies forbidden by the Necron Code of Battle. Of course, not that his subordinates have any reluctance to use them. Wherever possible, Zandrek ensures that enemy commanders are captured, not killed, and afterwards treated as honored prisoners, despite the angry noises coming from Zandrek's royal court. But my lord, why are these Necrontiers screaming wah all the time? Indeed, there are many Necron lords in Zandrek's court who would dearly love to see the old general removed from power, for they judge his adrift position to outweigh his feats of battle. However, as befits his station, Zandrek has formidable defenses against any such attempts. His personal sepulchre is heavily woven with traps, his personal retinue boasts three legions of Lichgard, and he even employs no less than four dozen food tasters even though it has been millennia since any real organic food crossed his lips. Yet Zandrek has one defense greater than all the others, his aid and protector known as Vargard Oberon. During their campaigns, Zandrek and Oberon proved to be almost unbeatable. Zandrek almost never lowers himself to personal melee combat, but instead wields as a weapon his grand battlefield acumen, which somehow still remains undimmed even after all his faltering memory. Under his gaze, the Necron armies react almost instantaneously to counter every strategy, shifting between aggressive and defensive postures at a moment's notice. With a few carefully chosen words of command, outflanking foes are isolated and crushed, enemy assaults are dispersed, and fire support positions obliterated. So perfect is Zandrek's reading of the flow of battle that even enemy experienced veterans will seem like raw and fumbling recruits as their every tactic is countered and anticipated. For his part, Oberon fights in the front line, wielding his war scythe with a precision to be expected out of a warrior who counts his campaigns in the thousands. Yet, no matter how far away he is, Oberon always keeps a close watch on Zandrek. His responsibilities as a bodyguard outweigh any other consideration. Should Zandrek be threatened, Oberon will always return to his side. It is well that Oberon is so dedicated, for a few lords of Gidrim are eager to fight alongside this Nemesaur. 
Some of them simply cannot tolerate his reminiscences of battles fought thousands of years ago, relevant to the campaign at hand though they are. For others, Zandrek's damaged mind is a constant reminder of the fate that might one day be theirs, should they have to enter sleep once again. None of them see that this damage has already been done, that they are, in truth, just as blind to their own idiosyncrasies as Zandrek is to his own. However, in a rare moment of honesty between the Nemesaur and the Vargard, Zandrek revealed that in fact he doesn't have engrammatic damage suffered in the Great Sleep. Instead, he chooses to play the part of the fool. He believes in accepting his fate as a soulless Necron, and enjoying the immortality he had been granted by pursuing endless campaigns with a merry attitude, which is just as honorable today as when he was a flesh and blood warrior. If others choose to see that as a failing or insanity, Zandrek is more than capable of living with it. Maybe the most detailed campaign we know about involving this guy is known as the Conquest of Utu Prime. This was a military campaign led by Zandrek against the imperial world of Utu Prime in the Vidar sector in the late 41st millennium. Zandrek did give the imperial defenders an ultimatum, allowing them one month to fully evacuate as was required by the ancient Necron Code of Battle. Yet, when the deadline was gone, the foolish humans had not availed themselves of such a generous offer. Indeed, while the Necron fleet had intentionally held off in orbit around Udu Prime's desert moon, four regiments of Imperial Guard Katakan jungle fighters and elements of three companies of the Imperial Fist chapter had come to reinforce the contested world. And so it was that when Zandrek finally launched his assault, he did so against a planet with formidable defenses. However, when his courtiers argued against prosecuting the war to completion, the Nemesaur only issued a grating laughter and sent a command which set the fleet in motion. Zandrek initially ignored Utu Prime's outlying cities, focusing his assault upon Fort Anon, the planetary capital. The first attack was a dozen squadrons of Doom Scythe fighters. They swarmed around Fort Anon's fortifications, great furrows of twisted metal and stone as they plowed through bastions, ferrocrete walls, and the luckless human defenders in between. To their credit, the humans did put up a good defense. Hydra flak tanks and defense lasers scoured the skies, driving off or blasting apart many of the Necron aircraft. But, each time a Doom Scythe was destroyed, another peeled off from the main group to exact vengeance. Soon, the aerial defenses were gone, and the landings began. Transport craft followed in the wake of the first assault wave. Night Scythes flew low over the wreckage of crashed Necron flyers and Imperial Bastions. Small arms fires scattered across their hulls as their flickering teleportation invasion beams delivered Zandrek's units into the heart of the human defenders. Phalanx upon phalanx of immortals and Necron warriors stalk through the fresh ruin, Gauss weapons blazing in unnaturally precise volleys as they drove the Catacans back. Here and there, an officer's barked orders held the guardsmen in line, but where the commanders fell, the Imperial lines went into full retreat. It was as the attacker's lines reached the planetary governor's citadel that the Imperial Fists finally made their presence known. Thunderhawk gunships screamed into the skies, shredding the oncoming Necron warriors with heavy bolter fire and blasting immortals limb from limb with missiles. As the gunships touched down among the rubble to disgorge space marines into the fray, the Necrons shifted to defensive protocol and awaited reinforcements. Alas for the Imperial Fists, from his vantage point in orbit, Sandrek had marked the approach of the Thunderhawks long before they decided to make their presence known. Thus, even as the roar of boulder fire echoed in the ruins, a shadow fell over the battlefield, as a massive Necron megalith descended. The megalith was no simple war engine, but a mighty floating fortress. Green fire lanced out from its flanks blasting Thunderhawks out of the air or crippling them on the ground. As the shadow grew larger, chunks of the megalith's understructure broke away, the blocks falling lazily to the ground. Except these were not wreckage, but smaller monoliths detaching from the mothership's hull. 
As each one touched down, it added their own firepower to the barrage assailing the Imperial fists. The Space Marines must have realized that they were doomed, but duty and stubborn tenacity made them redouble their efforts. Last cannon and multi melt of fire flickered through the ruin, the beams converging to pierce the hulls of the monoliths. Assault squads threw themselves at the Necron phalanxes, chainsaw teeth screaming as they ripped into living metal bodies. However, the megalith was now close enough to the ground to bring its invasion beams into play. Viridian light flickered over the battlefield as the teleport beams activated, delivering doomsday arcs, legions of Necron immortals, as well as Zandrek and his own personal Lich Guard into the thick of battle. The space marines that survived withdrew to the planetary governor citadel, but three doomsday arcs converged their fire on the great adamantium gate. For a few moments it glowed an angry red, and then burst into fragments with an ear-splitting crack. As the space marines fell deeper into the citadel, Zandrek released his war scythe in salute to the doomed enemy. Then the scythe swept down, and the Nemesaur led his army of the Undying through the ruined gate. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Necron overlord Zandrek for today. The one who chooses to believe that the glories of the ancient Necron Empire are still around. Definitely shows you can achieve a lot with the power of belief, even if you believe your enemies are not what they actually are and still manage to beat them. What are your thoughts on Zandrek? Is he among your favorite Necron characters? Did you even know about him prior to this episode? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found the video informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and have an awesome healthy day. The Emperor protects.